Hello and welcome to the Royal Bournemouth Hospital Cardiac Catheter Lab. I'm Peter O'Kane, I'm one of the interventional cardiologists here. We've been rather fortunate in Dorset in that we have not seen a huge volume of patients with COVID-19, unlike some of our colleagues around the rest of the United Kingdom. I've been following the situation since January and a lot of my colleagues here thought my predictions were rather extreme. However, I was simply following what was happening in Italy and as we've seen, we've effectively been two or three weeks behind them and are now experiencing a similar volume of cases with the virus. The major challenge to interventional cardiology is the deferral of elective activity over the last few weeks. And in addition, the reduction we have seen in the acute coronary work, both NSTEMI and STEMI, with perhaps a 30% reduction of both. This leads me to the concern that patients are suffering symptoms at home and are not presenting to us acutely, which of course may increase their morbidity and mortality. Given the ambiguity of diagnosing COVID-19 in the community, the fact that asymptomatic individuals may spread the virus and airborne micro droplets may also be a source of spread, we've all been concerned with the acquisition and use of personal protective equipment. We've also been concerned about the availability of testing. Thankfully, our national societies such as BCS and BCIS and the Resus Council have all agreed and confirmed that for cardiac catheter lab procedures, we should be dressed in full PPE. This is important as these procedures may be aerosol generating. It has been very impressive how nationally uh, hospitals have increased their capacity to treat COVID-19 patients by a complete change of infrastructure and work stream. In particular, the intensive care capacity has increased nationally. Locally, uh, our anaesthetists, one of whom is my wife, and intensivists have increased from eight to 24 beds in the ICU, with also potential of 28 mechanical ventilators in theatres. The sudden availability of systems such as Microsoft Team and Zoom to have non-face-to-face -face meetings has potentially been much more efficient and allowed things to continue despite the crisis. Using virtual clinics with systems such as Attend Anywhere are also helpful for patients and I'm sure will be a long-term feature way after this crisis is completed. I suspect with a careful unlock of the economy and careful adherence to the capacity and demand neutrality of the NHS to avoid it being overwhelmed, we can move forward in the crisis. Importantly, have to unlock our cardiac services so that we avoid morbidity and mortality in this population who we need to treat 